Penn State football getting some news in the bye week that's going to change your travel schedules for the next set five years. Greg Pickle here with us. Definitely going to change his travel plans for the near future. Uh, the Big Ten released its schedules for 2024 and beyond with the additions of the new schools in the Big Ten, which at this point obviously is just for 30 years has been branding, Greg, but it's definitely not 10 teams anymore. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, T. Frank. Nothing like a bye week exciting news dump Thursday. Uh, no, I think this was yeah. something we've been waiting for for a long time, as you well know, and as a, our listeners well know, the Big Ten has been uh, on the record in a couple different places saying they were getting ready to do this. Of course, they had put out 24 and 25 schedules previously when USC and UCLA joined the conference, and then they had to redo them when Oregon and Washington came aboard. So we finally got that information, and I, I guess I may cost us listenership here, T. Frank, by answering the big question first, but no, yeah. there are no dates. There are no <laughs> dates yet, and – you know, I, I want to say that we might see those by the end of the year uh, or very early in 2024. But if mm -hmm. you're, you know, someone who's trying to plan a wedding or a bachelor party or an anniversary trip or Still whatever. Do it in the fall. <laughs> yeah, right. But if you have to, uh, you know, I know that's the first question everyone asks is what, what are the dates? When are the dates coming? And I think we're going to be mm -hmm. waiting a little bit on those. So let's uh, get right into it. Let's check out the um, the schedule here. And by the way, this is going to be from Greg's article over at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. I'm literally just ripping it off the front page and putting it here on the YouTube channel. This is free content. You can check out at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. You can also get his thoughts on the schedule release. Um, if you join us, join Blue White Illustrated for $1 and you get to test it out for a month. But just jump in like you know we're we're doing an awesome job greg is doing an awesome job breaking news breaking everything down for you so uh it's well worth your time and your money to get the best pensive football content pensive basketball content anywhere you can get and of course wrestling greg we haven't talked in months so i'm sure there's wrestling things we get into today but for what sure. are the major changes we're not going to we're not going to there's too many things to get to here but what are the major changes here in 2024 that people can see on the screen yeah, I would say the biggest one compared to the schedule that was released previously is that the USC and UCLA dates are flipped in terms of when they come to Beaver Stadium. So mm -hmm. USC uh, was on the home schedule originally for 2024 uh, and 2025 Penn State was to host UCLA and, and now those are uh, flipped. So not a huge deal, not the end of the world. I think the key here for the 2024 schedule is there were some other changes, like I believe Indiana uh, was originally on the 2024 schedule, and they are maybe substituted with per uh, Minnesota uh, is who they're substituted with. So there were some changes. I wouldn't call them significant ones. You're kind of trading uh, back third conference, uh, current conference teams for other ones. Yeah. Uh, in the you know for the by and large of this, Ohio State was to come to Penn State in 2024. It still is. Obviously, when the initial schedule came out, Washington was not on it uh, for 2024. So those are the big changes. But to me, uh, you know, I wrote about it for Blue Illustrated subscribers, and I'll get into it a little bit here. But the key is, is that I think this 2024 Big Ten schedule sets up really nicely for Penn State. You have Ohio State, obviously, coming to Beaver Stadium, Penn State will go there, of course, in October. You know, with the portal, obviously, we'll see how things shake out. They're going to lose some guys to the NFL. So is Penn State. But yep. when I look at this, my first impression is that you have Washington and you have USC, two very hot Pac-12 teams who are going to be fighting it out to the end in that conference because they have two of the better quarterbacks in the Pac-12 and really in college football who are both going to, in all likelihood, barring some kind of crazy change, go to the NFL next year. So you're going to host Washington and go to USC. Both will be challenges. There's no question. Yep. Uh, but both are going to be breaking in new quarterbacks. And Penn State obviously is not going to be planning on doing that. So when you think about what Penn State loses next year, T. Frank, to the NFL, obviously uh, don't want to get too deep into the woods here, but you're right. almost certainly losing Kalen King, uh, yep. Johnny Dixon, Probably yep. Daquan Hardy, I would assume, and yep. Chuck Robinson, and maybe uh, Adisa Isaac. So you're talking about the the bulk of your current top pass rush and quarterbacks. Yep. You're facing those teams with the same quarterbacks next year. And yeah. look, they could go to the portal and get guys. They may have guys on campus that are just as good. I don't know if that's true, but we've seen it. Penn State fans have lived it for five weeks. What life can be like and the ups and ups and downs and downs of a first-year starting quarterback. So I think that's helpful. And then the schedule itself just doesn't 
look to me on paper, transfer portal and recruiting willing, like one that Penn State will have extreme challenges with. It reminds me a lot like this year's schedule to a degree where you knew who the big challenges are going to be and were going to be. And you also could look at it and say you see a certain number of wins, uh, you know, based on how things play out. I think that's the conversation we're going to be having, you know, next year in June and July. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, as you were talking about that, I was already thinking like, okay, who the the you went through like the obvious names of the players uh, who will be here next year uh, in Happy Valley, and then some of the defensive line situations. Because I is there does he come back? Does he not come back? Um, you know, defensive tackle. I think it's going to be interesting. It, it just you're already the wheels are spinning about what you just said of you know how good is Penn State going to be with this opportunity that they have in front of them. Um, as you laid it out. So again, check out what he had to say more in depth at bluewhiteillustrated.com. Do you want to move on to 25? Is there anything else in 24 you wanted to talk about? No, not at the moment. I would just say that, you know, I think that, and it's the same conversation that applies to, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the 2025, 2025 schedule there. The same thing kind of applies in the sense that, you know, you used to be able to, and it wasn't all that long ago, but you used to be able to look at a schedule two a year, or even a year, two years down the road, and say, okay, we can maybe on paper say this about X or this about Y. Right. And then the transfer portal really kind of threw all that for a loop because you just don't know anymore. I think Oregon obviously coming to Beaver Stadium in 2025 is interesting. Where's Matt Rule going to have that program at Nebraska in 2025? Yeah. What about David? Is David Braun going to be the head coach at Northwestern? Where are they going to be? What is the portal going to happen? You know, what's going to happen with them in the portal yeah. once this offseason arrives? You go to Ohio State. Obviously, that'll be a challenge. Penn State fans know no matter what, it seems like playing at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa, which Penn State will do in 2025, will it will always be, in most years, a pretty good challenge. So, you know, where's Michigan State two years from now when they get through this Mel Tucker stuff? Who is their yeah. head coach? I mean, you just yep. look at this, and obviously I think UCLA has some work to do. Greg Schiano is going to, if he's still at Rutgers, will have a, I think, different-looking Rutgers program than what he has today. So you and I were talking uh, off-air before we got started here, but – you know, what I think is just so fascinating is that it you would like, to, again, be able to sit here and talk about 2024 schedule, 2025 schedule. And even further, you just don't know what these teams are going to look like. We don't know what Penn State's going to look like. Penn yeah. State, you know, has been pretty reliable when it comes to getting some some impact guys out of the portal and then also maybe losing some guys to it. Now, yeah, if you but, look at, but being pretty yeah. stable, I think, within right. that within the transfer yeah. portal, they are not going and getting like Lincoln Riley bringing up USC, like not going and trying to buy a defense. And, and right. you know, I'm not trying to cast aspersions, but like when you have NIL and the transfer portal, it's kind of what they did with Jordan Addison, like the, they're not going out and, and wholesale changing. Before we get any further, I do want to, because we're going to make this a podcast as well, uh, for all of our podcast listeners want to go back and just go through the 24 schedule, home and away. So in Penn State for 2024, they will get at home, Illinois, UCLA, Ohio State, Maryland, Washington. Greg did a great job of breaking these down, but I just want to put them all together so that you can hear them cohesively. Then away, it's Minnesota, Purdue, USC, Wisconsin. Now in 2025... Home is Indiana, Northwestern, Nebraska, and Oregon. And then away, Iowa, Michigan State, Ohio State, Rutgers, UCLA. No Michigan in the first two years. Do you find that interesting? You know, I think that we knew that when the divisions went away, Penn State was not going to face Ohio State every year, and it was not going to face face Michigan every year. Penn State yeah. the only team in the Big Ten without a protected opponent. I believe there are 18, if that number is correct, instances of those. Penn State has none. So they were never going to play Ohio State and Michigan every year. It turns out in this new cycle, for however long the schedules that were released today stay the schedules that were released today, yeah. uh, Penn State's going to play Ohio State in 24, 25, and 2028, and it will go home and home with Michigan in 2026 and 2027. So, okay. yeah, I, I you know I think that there's just – you were always going to – in a five-year instance, I think you were always going to have to have three and two. There's just no way around it. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, obviously, some Penn State fans and Ohio State fans and Michigan fans love this, and, and there's good reason for that. Some don't like the fact that two big games, and you would usually always get you know one of them at home – are no longer on the schedule, and that's what's going to make this this uh, non -con you know the, the conference expansion rather uh, very interesting to see which teams that maybe weren't in the Big Ten before or were, but maybe have some better luck with things with the divisions going away uh, and to improve their roster become maybe more marquee opponents. So yeah, you know, it is what it is. I think it's obviously good for Penn State, but you know as the expansion continues, you add four teams from the Pac-12, there's going to be a little bit more variety too in this yeah. league. No doubt about that. So, you yeah. know, I think that, you know, there's again, there's a subsection of, I think, 
all three of those fan bases who wish those two all, you know, they all played each other every year. And yeah. I think by and large, all three of them, the majority of their fans would probably prefer to not have that be the case. Yes, uh, especially in – I think it means a little bit less in a 12-team playoff era. Certainly in a 14-team playoff era, it matters quite a bit. But, you know, any opportunity you have to go through undefeated or to have as few losses as possible is important. The reason I mentioned Ohio State uh, twice in the first two years is – is once again what we were talking about before so let's go through the 26th schedule minnesota purdue rutgers usc wisconsin at home then away maryland michigan northwestern washington 27 and i'll just stop here if you want to get the 2028 schedule you're that hardcore you can go find it at, at bluewhiteillustrated.com but 2027 is maryland michigan michigan state washington at home and then away illinois indiana oregon purdue wisconsin um away so we're the conversation and you're more dialed into this than I am is 25. You can bet it's going to be pretty close to what it is now. 24. We're pretty much locking that in after that. Who knows? So like what's the schedule look like in 2026? You can put this schedule release in a time capsule and put it with your 2020 schedule and see, you know, compare them as historical documents. that meant nothing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We got three straight years of that. Right. So I guess what what are your thoughts about these uh, advanced schedules and not maybe not their worth but like what do you take away from them what are you, what's interesting any nuggets you pulled looking way into the future Yeah I mean so a couple of things you know when you look at 2027 or 2026 rather uh David Braun after James Franklin's comments about you know not practicing with music and noise because of the way the environment is at Northwestern uh, David Braun the Northwestern interim head coach said after the game that he looks forward to inviting Penn State back to Northwestern and the rebuilt or renovated, whatever they're doing, Ryan Field, uh, which is expected to be done in 2026, T. Frank. So I don't know if David Braun will still be there, but that will <laughs> obviously be something that comes up. Yeah. Uh, much like the uh, Kinnick Stadium injury booing Penn State players thing did from a couple years ago in two years. So, uh, you know, that's maybe the, the only thing I could say uh, concretely is going to come out, you know, ab- among all of these opponents and Penn State down the road. But you know, no, I just think it's really interesting that Penn State is, I, I believe they only play Nebraska once. Like there's some teams that maybe you would have seen more in the past uh, that are not going to cycle through as much just because of, again, the number of, of teams that are going to be in the Big Ten Conference. So yeah. I thought that was a little bit noteworthy. But no, by and large, I think that the focus is really on 2024 and 2025 and then, you know, 2026 and beyond. It's just too hard to say what is going to happen. Is there going to be super conferences? Are we going to have more conference expansion? What's right. going to happen with college football playoff? How is that going to impact things? And then there's a non-conference element of it too, and a league schedule element to it that could impact these 16 step or 2026 through 2028 seasons. You know, is the Big Ten going to continue playing the same number of league games? Are they and the SEC going to get on the same page and make it? standard across both their conferences in terms of how many league games they play, you know? So there's still a lot to figure out here. Number one, I know everyone's on everyone's mind is dates for 2024 and 2025. But when you look further down the road, I think the main thing is not so much who Penn state will be playing and what they could be like by that time, but really just what these schedules, what these conferences and what this sport of college football in general are going to look like. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. So the the last thing I'll say here is that that this is what makes 2023 so important is that if Penn State can get to the Big Ten championship game, get to the college football playoff, make a meaningful statement in the final year of this four team, uh, to the four team format. It's a springboard into the new era where there's going to be chaos, there's going to be opportunity, and you talk about the transfer portal. If you want to rebuild and reload and have a real shot be on the biggest stage possible and go and establish yourself as a team where you want guys, players want to go to your school and they are starting to build that. We'll see what happens this year, but that's why 23 is so important because it's going to set up the, the only year that I think we have any confidence in really, which is 2024, which seems like a great opportunity and getting the wins in the transfer portal start with getting wins on the football field. Greg, any last thoughts before we get out of here? No, uh, the bye week's almost over, T. Frank. I don't know where they go every year. They fly by seemingly more fast than or uh, more quickly than uh, than in season game weeks. But uh, hey, it's almost UMass UMass week, and UMass week will be dominated by hey, it's almost Ohio State week. (laughs) So uh, I'm looking forward to that, and uh, you know, we'll see where things play out from here, T. Frank.
Ohio State Part 1 coming up next week. <laughs> That's how it's going to roll. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. He is Greg Pickle. Thank you so much for taking time out of your afternoon to come and talk to people about what they should expect with the Big Ten schedule release. Uh, again, more information at bluewhiteillustrated.com. If you're watching the video, please like and subscribe. We'll be back with more Penn State football news when it happens here on the Blue White Illustrated YouTube channel.